Let's do a little recap of what we learned last week and the week before. Darwin went on some travels when he was young for about five years. He visited uh, many different places, but one that really stuck out was the Galapagos Islands. And this is where the Galapagos Islands are. Um, they're just west of South America. If we zoom in on it, that's what they look like there. There's many different islands. It's not just one. So Darwin, when he went on these, this five year of traveling on that little ship, the observations he made and questions that he had were uh, many. And here were just some of them. So when he went through Australia or by Australia, he noticed there were no rabbits living there. There are rabbits living there now, but at that point there were none. He also saw lots of kangaroo there, but he wondered, well, why are there no kangaroos living in England? He also noticed that many fossils resemble living things today, but not exactly the same. They somehow have changed. Tortoises from the different islands of the Galap Galapagos had different shell shapes. Why wouldn't they all be the same shape? Um, he also noticed many different th kinds of birds with different beaks feet, and wings. So now that we're on this week, we're going to learn about natural selection, and we're going to hone in on that. Natural selection has many different parts to it, so we're going to talk about like what is natural selection, what is survival of the fittest, what is actually fitness, and then we're going to talk about also descent with modification and common descent. So keep all these five items in the back of your mind as we are learning this week. So with natural selection, how does it actually work? Well, we have the struggle for existence. Um, what happens here is populations have more babies, more offspring, than can survive. It's like, okay, let's have more because we know some of them are going to die off. We also have variation and adaptation. There are variations in the population as like, let's say a duck has many babies. They're not all exactly the same. They're a little bit different. And that's the same with like descent with modification. They're descending down the ranks in their, you know, mother and offspring and then they are modified a little bit, just a little bit different. Um, also then there's survival of the fittest. Individuals with the highest fitness survival or fitness survive and reproduce and pass on their traits. So you can see how all three of these are so closely related and they all fit under the umbrella of natural selection. Here, look at this sequence of pictures. So we start out here on the left, and we've got these light-colored mice and then dark-colored mice. And then we have a, maybe a hawk, and this hawk feeds on the mice. Okay, so some mice are eaten, and you can see the mice that are eaten are the ones that kind of stick out. They have the light color and the dark background here so that they're able to be seen by this hawk. And then the next picture, as time goes by, oh, look, more babies are born, but which ones are going to have more um, offspring? The dark ones, okay? Because there's more dark ones back here that are left to actually reproduce. So which type of mouse is more fit for this habitat? If you said the darker mouse is more fit, you are correct. Good job. 